Welcome back, boys, and we are getting back to the Jag project. This is a 1973 Jaguar XJ6, and what is really cool about this car is it's a California car, still has the plate from 89. It's rust free. It's a super rare color. This is called Pale Primrose Yellow. And most importantly, the reason I bought it is that it has a manual transmission swap and it has triple carbs and an intake from an E-Type. So mechanically, this is an E-Type, which is unobtainium. So I'm getting to play with a very expensive drivetrain only because it was in a four door. And personally, I think this thing does look pretty cool. It's got great lines. Uh, it's just not as sexy as a two-door sports car. But back then in the 60s, this is what they did. They took the two-door sports car, which was selling awesome, and they designed a sedan around it. This has independent suspension. It's got inboard brakes. And again, manual transmission and triple SUs. I bought this thing mainly because just this section of the engine is worth about what I paid for it. So I bought this thing years ago as a COVID project, but I just didn't get to it because I was stuck on the 911. Now with that driving, we're gonna bring this thing into the garage from its hiding place and get to work on fixing it and see if we can get it running. So can you hook up the battery charger to the battery clamp so we can just get some power to roll down the window? Uh-oh. I swear the windows worked before, didn't they? I thought so. That's a good start to not have the windows even work on this. So what we're going to do to start here is we're going to use an air compressor and just blow out the valley and get rid of all the dirt and shit in there. Then we're going to pull the plugs and we're going to dump some marble mystery oil in each cylinder and just let it soak on those rings and loosen them up. All right, boys, so we've been soaking the top of the pistons with Marvel Mystery Oil. The plugs are out. It is a perfect time to do a compression test. I wanna do this before I get to the carbs because if one cylinder is bad, that would substantially change what I'm doing with this car. And you just connect the gauge and all we need to do now is crank the engine. Unfortunately, I have a stuck fuel float. So if I turn the ignition on at all, um, it's gonna just start pouring fuel out the bottom of my engine. So to prevent the car from just pissing fuel all over the ground, what I'm trying to do is cut the power to the fuel pumps. This car has two fuel tanks, which is weird. It has dual fillers. It's got one tank on each corner of the back of the car here. And what I found was two non-standard fuel pumps with no way to disconnect the power. Now I could just unbolt these uh, and that would break the ground and I guess they wouldn't pump anymore. That's a good idea. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is just pull a fuse and I've never seen the fuse panel in this car. I wanna share it with you guys because it's weird. So we're in the Jag. You'll notice that in the center here, the wood is held on with what should be two threaded little fasteners here. Well, what you do is you unthread those and this whole panel is on a hinge. And that's where a lot of the car's electrical system is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for power going to the fuel tank selector switch right here. And we're just gonna pull the cords out of here. Or that should stop the power going to the fuel pump. 
This is so weird. I looked at the service manual and this should be the power to the fuel pump, which means if I turn the key, I should no longer hear anything. And I don't. With the power to the fuel pump cut off, now we're gonna go back to the compression test. And what we're gonna do is just crank the car for about four seconds with the throttle mashed all the way down. On cylinders number one and two, I had 110 PSI. On cylinder number three, I had 90 PSI, which is kind of concerning. And then on cylinders four and five, I had 110 PSI. And then on cylinder number six, I also had 90 PSI. I'd really like these numbers to be a little closer together because 20 PSI lower on cylinders number three and six seems a little odd to me. So I wasn't totally satisfied with cylinders number three and six, so I just dumped some Marvel Mystery Oil down them and we're gonna retest. If it goes up quite a bit, that probably means bad rings. This also could just help dissolve like a stuck oil control ring. I don't know. We're gonna just like run it with some more oil in it and see what happens. If you learned anything from this episode, you want to see more of it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. So what do you guys think? Think this thing is screwed or think we can make a rip? Let me know. Cheers, dudes.